So do I believe in New Year's resolutions? No, not at all. You know, miraculously waiting for the calendar to flip to start improving yourself is beyond ridiculous. Good morning, guys. I want to get to the beach and I want to get a good quality rehab session in. I'm going to be doing stuff with the ball. Quickly grab some breakfast. No time to waste. See you guys at the beach. So finally here, we've been to like three beaches already. There's just high tide at the moment, so this wasn't enough room to train. But we finally found a beach, and today's actually the 1st of January, so it's a new year. Everyone's my age, probably had a party last night, so they're probably sleeping in, getting over the hangover. Not me, we're getting into some training. So I'm gonna get a session in before it gets way too hot. All right, let's get into some stretching and rehab work. So to start with, I'm just going to do my typical game day stretching routine. So it's a lot of static stretching, so holding for 15 to 20 seconds. So I'm just going to do a quick 10 second time lapse of my static stretching routine, just for the sake of shortening this video. If you're interested in seeing my detailed static stretching routine, I'll link that up here. But the reason I'm focusing on my static stretching is I want to gain that flexibility back. So you guys know I've been through surgery, so I've been sitting off for like the last six to eight weeks and my muscles, I can definitely feel they're really tight and they're not loose, so I really want to get them flexible again. So I've added a couple of mobility and extension exercises. I'm really focusing on my groin, hip flexor and abdominals. Just because that's where I find it really tight at the moment, I've been applying these types of stretches into my rehab program at the start of last week and it seemed to be working really well. I'm definitely considering adding these stretches into my regular stretching program. The second rehab exercise is a basic hip rotation and really focuses on the groin and hip extension. These are a very important exercise for me, especially when I get back pre-season. I don't want my range of motion or the lack of range of motion to limit my abilities to go into tackles, making dribbles, doing long range passes, going for shots, stretching for balls and so forth. The third exercise now shifts the focus onto my ankles. Now I've mentioned in previous episodes and previous videos, I have really weak ankles and I sprained my left ankle actually the week before my surgery. And every time you sprain your ankle, you lose receptors, which allows you to sense your body positioning, motion, and equilibrium. So as part of my rehab program, I'm retraining the receptors I have left so I can regain some sense and control in my ankle. This exercise also strengthens the repaired scar tissue to regain stability, which helps reduce the chance of me rolling it again. Now this last rehab exercise is just basic ankle mobility, and this will help increase the repaired scar tissue's flexibility so I'm able to form football specific athletic movements effectively. Now comes my favourite part, getting touches on the ball. So today's technical circuit is part of my rehab program which will focus on different technical skills with an aim and focus on my ankles and middle section. To start with, I'm just performing basic alternate juggles 50 times, nothing strenuous, just to get some quick touches on the ball. I will highlight this is a very light session where I'm performing each exercise between 60 and 80% intensity. I'm taking a gradual approach and I certainly don't want to risk re-injury so close to pre-season. Next I'm performing lateral movement with a focus on applying force to the ankle to help it get used to particular movement patterns I'd come across in a football match. The third station really challenges my affected areas. When I hop and apply force on my left ankle, I'm really testing the stability and strength of the scar tissue. Also add in the surface environment I'm performing these athletic movements on, the sand, really challenges my left ankle strength on an unstable surface. The footwork sequence on the right side of the ladder helps sharpen my footwork and also helps my hip rotation and how fast I can rotate them. 
Next I perform a basic pass into the goal and perform a ball mastery combination to activate my hips. I then head straight into some linear dribbling. This is really difficult to perform and by this point my ankles were burning, my legs were sore, my hips were fatigued just because I haven't been used to training at this intensity for the past eight weeks. Sand is so hot, man. Oh my god, like I'm walking on fire. Alright, no excuses though. Let's get back into it. Let's slow down. I wanna live right now. I'm not poor. About tomorrow. Will everything we know be lost and changed for something new? Only time will tell, but I'll be holding you. I'll be holding you. What a great session that was. Go a little more low. Oof. <laughs> that sounds a bit boring. Oof. That, that's unnatural. Wow, what a great... Nah, that's that was well. Oh, <laughs> Wow, what a great session that was. It was really intense. The first time for my ankle in an unstable environment and I've come out without any niggles whatsoever, which is brilliant news. The only thing that bothered me was the sand. It was really hot. Man, that burned. So if you appreciate the fact that I've pretty much done my training session on lava rocks, leave a like. Seriously. Alright, so I've done my post-session stretching routine. I won't show you that. This vlog is really long already. We're going to go home and grab something to eat. So I'll see you guys at home. Let's go. Alright, we're back home, guys. Man, I'm starting to feel a bit sore, eh? Like, I think that's probably the most intense session I've had since my operation. I mean, if you saw my last episode of Road to Recovery and you saw that I'm literally just juggling um, a football and I was getting puffed after like 300 juggles. Slowly starting to see some progress in my hip flexor and my ankle, which is great. And you know, it is frustrating for me knowing that before the operation, I know that I could go 100% harder, I was sharper, I was fitter, my touch was a lot better. Just gotta keep positive, gotta keep patient. That's the best thing to do, there's no point in being negative. As long as I'm doing something every day to improve myself, I'm satisfied. So I've just got my post-workout shake. You guys have seen this before in a few of my videos. Basically, it's a fruit protein smoothie. So all I do is put full banana in, suck two tablespoons of strawberry yogurt, chuck on three scoops of protein powder, and top it off with some ice and milk. And this right here is pretty much a meal in itself. So I'm getting about 35 to 40 grams of protein, and plus I'm getting about 30 grams of carbohydrates as well. So overall, great combination, great drink to have. All right, so it's about 12.15 in the afternoon. Honestly, I'm not doing anything special, even though it's New Year's Day. Oh, I haven't even said New Year's. Happy New Year's to you guys. Happy New Year's. Oh, that was so lifeless. <laughs> Let me check. Happy New Year. Anyway, I'm also doing nothing special, just spending a day with my family. Um, I'm going to edit this video that you're currently watching. Now it's going to take a long time to edit. So I'm just going to edit for about an hour while I drink my shake. Got my laptop, got the GoPro, got the hard drive. Let's get into it. So fragile. So I've got the majority of the editing done earlier. I just spent the last few hours with family for New Year's Day. Now I actually want to talk to you guys about something that I feel is really important and I feel like you guys need to hear. So let's just hold that thought for a minute. I'm going to finish off a really late lunch and I'll get back to you soon. It's got a super late lunch here. So I've just got a pork chop and that's full of protein. Uh, over here I've got vegetables. Now there are better quality vegetables available. I know, I just haven't gone grocery shopping yet, so I've just got peas, carrots and beans. Obviously in a perfect bubble, I'd like to have broccoli, cauliflower, beans, spinach and a lot more green things. And over here I've got some healthy fats in the form of cashew nuts. Overall, pretty healthy meal. Alright, I'm going to devour this. I'll get back to you in two seconds, like literally. 
so since it's the start of the new year, I just want to quickly talk about New Year's resolutions and what's my opinion on it. So do I believe in New Year's resolutions? No, not at all. You know, miraculously waiting for the calendar to flip to start improving yourself is beyond ridiculous. I feel like it's just a personal manipulation tactic on yourself to start over, to start fresh. It's a new year, it's a new me. You know, and I see a lot of people fail their New Year's resolutions quite early on because of that false imagery at the turn of the calendar, that fresh start. You know, the reason for setting these types of New Year's resolutions isn't strong, personal, or emotional enough for you to take effective action. You know, you've got to look at your life from a different perspective. You need to be making daily resolutions that relate to your overall vision or goal. Each day only comes once. You need to be making these small progressions every day. You need to start taking control of your future. And don't necessarily make it on the new year because, again, you can fall into the habit that it's not personal enough. It's just that calendar turn, that false imagery. Don't rely or depend on the turn of the calendar to fix yourself. If you make a New Year's resolution every single year, I want you to picture a tunnel, okay? So when you set your goal, that's you starting to commit, that's you starting to walk into the tunnel and you've got that natural light coming onto you and that natural light is your New Year's resolution. If you only revise it every year, the more the weeks, the months, the days go by, it's going to get darker and darker and you're getting further away from that natural light and eventually it's going to get too dark that you're going to lose yourself in that tunnel and that's where people break. You need that light, those torches to guide you along the way in that tunnel. And that's where daily resolutions come in. That way you're constantly revising your goals. You know what you need to do. I mean, it's helped me along my journey so far. So take it or leave it, guys, I guess. But yeah, I guess that's my little rant. I'm a little motivational Monday to kickstart your year. But yeah, I'm going to end the vlog there. So it gets you guys thinking about New Year's resolutions. I mean, again, that's just my opinion. So take it or leave it. But I just want you guys to, to see a different perspective. Alright guys, I'm going to cut it off there. It's a super long vlog. First of all, Happy New Year. I hope you've had a wonderful 2017 and I want you to go out in 2018 and make it your year. Daily progressions, daily resolutions. If you gained something from this video and you enjoyed it guys, please give it that thumbs up. It helps me out a ton. helps me reach new people on YouTube and helps this channel grow. Also, comment down below what you guys think of New Year's resolutions. Do you stick with it? Do you make daily goals? How do you approach your goals? What is your mindset? I'd really love to know. I'm really curious. Please comment that down below. All right, if you're new to this space, you have big goals just like me, hit that subscribe button. I know I've got big plans for this year. I hope you guys do too. Alright, I'm cutting off, signing out, catch you later.